Today I'm going to dive back into it again and we are going to discuss some of the biggest breakthrough projects in reinforcement learning over the past decade or so. What is reinforcement learning? Very simply put, RL is a type of machine learning where the AI collects experiences in performing a task and then improves its intelligence as it spends more and more time interacting with its environment. Think about how you learn to crawl as an infant. You didn't know how the physics of the world works, how your body interacts with gravity and friction. It was a blank slate and your parents were asking you to crawl, just showing annoying demonstrations all day long of crawling as you stared blankly at them. And then one day you made some random hand and leg movements attempting to move forward. Sometimes you made progress and your parents probably rewarded you with kisses and candy. And sometimes you fell and you got a negative feedback because either you got hurt or your parents started hating you. Each attempt to crawl was an experience that updated your inner policy about how crawling should work. It formed this mental model about the world's dynamics and your own capabilities and how to best use them. And slowly, with enough experiences, you train your mental models enough to eventually be an absolute beast at crawling. Job well done, you're magnificent. That is pretty much exactly how reinforcement learning agents learn to. There is an agent interacting with its environment in a cycle of observations and actions and always collecting positive or negative rewards and improving their game plan or policy such that the positive rewards can be maximized. Reinforcement learning has achieved some awe-inspiring results in training agents to perform tasks, complex tasks, optimally. As we will see in this video, these tasks could be anything from playing video games to complex strategic games like chess or go, learning locomotion skills for virtual characters, and learning dexterous skills for a robot. Starting off, we are going all the way back to 2013 when an RL algorithm called DQN played Atari games with human level performance. The algorithm looks at the last four frames of the game's screen and from these pixels it learns to predict the right action that maximizes the chances of success in the game. For example, to play Breakout, the AI looks at the current game situation and then decides whether to move left, stay still or move right. The agent is rewarded for hitting the bricks and it's penalized for losing a life. At first, AI takes random actions and it fails a lot, but soon it begins to improve its policy after playing the game millions of times and learning which actions lead to high scores. Internally, the DQN algorithm trains a neural network called the Q-network that inputs a state and outputs a quality score of every available action. With more training, the model learns to predict accurate quality scores and therefore learn to pick better actions during exploration. It just blows my mind that something like this even works and it's fascinating to see how the AI gets better at the game with more and more experiences, just as a human would do. My favorite part is when the AI figures out this kind of a tricky strategy to only kill the bricks at the far edge of the screen and then pass the ball through that narrow gap to achieve this ultimate badass strategy for breaking breakout. And the next breakthrough we're going to talk about is AlphaGo, an AI model that learned to play Go and famously beat the Go world champion and legend Lee Sedol four games to one in one of the most monumental achievements in AI history. I strongly recommend you guys to check out this great documentary which is available to watch free on YouTube and it's a great watch and more than an AI story, they really tell a humbling yet inspirational human story. Ah, 정말 이렇게 우리 인간 나약한 존재였나? 제가 이기므로써 정말 아직은 지켜냈다고 생각이 드는 그런 순간이었을 수 있고 이제는 앞으로 인공지능을 이기긴 정말 힘들어지겠지만은 그래도 이그한 판을 이기므로써 아 충분하다 이것으로 충분하다. Under the hood, AlphaGo was trained first on a large data set of expert human Go games, uh, thereby teaching it some fundamental concepts and tricks and patterns that human players use in their games. Next, AlphaGo was improved using reinforcement learning where it played millions of games against earlier version of itself, a technique known as self-play. Basically, it played to defeat its previous best self, update to an even better self, 
with these new experiences and then try to beat this new version. So incrementally stacking the odds and improving iteratively. Internally, AlphaGo trains two neural networks, a policy network that suggests the next move by assigning a probability value to each available action, and a value network that numerically evaluates the likelihood of winning from a given board position. AlphaGo uses a search technique called Monte Carlo Tree Search to determine the best move uh, by calculating multiple moves into the future using its policy network and then evaluating a sample of these future board positions using its value network. Now this might sound a bit complicated, but trust me, this is pretty much exactly how humans play strategic board games. We see a board position, we pick some candidate moves, and then we visualize these multiple probable future board position by imagining the next moves from us as well as our opponent. And then finally, we evaluate each of these future positions to determine which is the most favorable of them all. And then we finally play the move. A year later, DeepMind improved AlphaGo with AlphaGo Zero. And interestingly, this time, they entirely threw away the pre-training step on human games and let the AI learn everything from scratch just using reinforcement learning with self-play. As a human, my natural instinct is to question that, like how can our guidance be detrimental to the AI? But as a student of ML, let me try to rationalize why this might be a good thing. Effectively, we are removing all the biases and imperfection that the AI might learn from those human Go games and by going straight into self-play, the AI is completely unshackled and can explore whatever it wants. This allows the AI to learn about the game states that might be limited or totally absent in the human data domain and explore unconventional winning strategies that were previously unexplored by humans. AlphaGo always has an opponent of just the right level. So it starts off extremely naive, it starts off with completely random play, and yet at every step of the learning process, it has an opponent, a sparring partner if you like, that's exactly calibrated to its current level of performance. And to begin with, these players are very, very weak, but over time they become progressively stronger and stronger and stronger. It defeated the version of AlphaGo that won against the world champion Lisa Doll, and it beat that version of AlphaGo by 100 games to zero. I always shrug when people throw around the word creative when it comes to AI models, especially like generative models like ChatGPT or diffusion-based image models. Um, I don't think those models are being creative because at the end of the day, their outputs are derivatives of human knowledge and they're not based on any intrinsic exploration of language or art. However, every strategy that AlphaGo Zero learns is intrinsic and by definition creative because they are all coming from within its own gameplay experiences, which it learned in this airtight vacuum away from the human knowledge. After around 40 days, we found that it had actually defeated all previous versions of AlphaGo to become the strongest Go program in the world. And this is all for a system that's been trained completely from scratch, starting from random behavior and progressing from first principles to really discover tabula rasa, how to play the game of Go. If you're enjoying this video, do hit that like button, drop a comment because that really helps how YouTube sees my content uh, and, and you know recommend to other people. Check out some of my other stuff, consider subscribing. I'm still a baby YouTuber so your feedback and your support helps me out way more than you can imagine. Back to the video. Uh, despite the success of AlphaGo Zero, it is worth noting that human data can still play a massive role in improving RL training when applied to the right domains. For example, in 2018, we had this seminal deep mimic paper that trained virtual characters to walk and run and do acrobatics in a physics-based simulated environment using human motion capture data. Basically, these characters have to learn to walk in the presence of external physical forces like gravity, friction, the body's own inertia, and much like the baby crawling example from the beginning of the video, the AI learns using reinforcement learning. The input to these models are often the current pose of the agent along with other environmental factors, and the action the model outputs is either the torque or the target orientation for each of its joints, the shoulders, the arms, the hips, the legs, you name it. If we didn't use human data to guide training and just rewarded the agent for making forward progress, we would get very unpleasing motion like this, while the agent does indeed learn to use the physics to run forward, but it looks kind of crazy doing it. 
And by using the human motion data as reference, we are basically guiding the AI to get us what we need and that produce more aesthetically pleasing motion while it still learns to adapt to the physics. This means we can get valid reactions like these when we mercilessly bombard boxes at these characters. Even though these reactions were not part of the human motion capture data, the AI learns how to balance itself and still move forward. And there have been multiple future projects too that extends the ideas Deep Mimic introduced to do a variety of other tasks like carrying things from point A to point B and even playing basketball. And RL still remains one of the leading approaches towards physics-based character animation. While these projects are with virtual characters, RL is also applicable to the real-world domains and robotics. Often we start by training the RL agent in a simulation and then we transfer the learned policy into a real world, a technique known as sim to real transfer. And doing things in a simulation first makes the training process not only faster because you can train in multiple parallel environments, but it also is cheaper and less dangerous for the hardware involved. One huge success story of sim to real transfer is the Dactyle project from 2018. To quote OpenAI, Dactyle is a human-like robot hand trained to manipulate objects with unprecedented dexterity. The task is simple. Given an object, the robot hand has to efficiently reposition it to a target orientation. The agent is rewarded for reaching the goal position and penalized for dropping the object. They also use a popular training technique called domain randomization where they add small amounts of noise to everything during the simulation phase of training like add noise to the observation, randomize the physics interactions like friction, as well as the shape and size and color of these objects. This allows the model to explore a vast landscape of possible states it can see and train a robust policy that is prepared to react to a variety of different states it might see in the real world. And the video OpenAI produced advertising all this is pretty interesting too. So I think I'm gonna wrap up this video here, not because I have exhausted the list of great RL projects and I'll keep covering them more in future videos. Specifically for my next video, I'm going to discuss multi-agent RL, where multiple agents are trained together to either collaboratively complete a task or compete against each other. Do subscribe to the channel to be in the loop whenever that one drops. Another super relevant one that I skipped here is RLHF, which is used to train LLM models like InstructGPT, ChatGPT to follow instructions, which I covered briefly in my NLP history video, which I will link somewhere around here. I also did a pretty detailed video on some modern RL projects that combine large language models to train game playing AI. So feel free to check those out if you're interested. Let's wrap it up for now. If you're in the RL space as a student or a researcher or as a professional, please tell us some of your favorite and inspirational RL projects. Uh, if you're new to the field, you tell us what impressed you the most about the projects I talked about here. I'll see you in the comments. Have a good one.